Welcome to the Glasgow Farm Church. There you go. You can honk your horn here at church. It's fine and dandy. We look forward to that. Uh, I'm Dale Glasgow, and my wife Sharon Glasgow, we're pastors of the Glasgow Farm Church. We welcome you here today. All those people who are not here, we welcome you to the service as well. We're outside in the cloudless sky. The sun is almost hot, and God is here. He is here today to do great and mighty work, so we're just expecting him to do everything that he says in the whole Bible. Amen? So if you all would pray with me, we're going to go to the throne of God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for making this day for us. We thank you for keeping us all safe in this time of the hardest in our whole country. We thank you, God, that you have given us vision to be a church in this time. We thank you for growing our labors. We thank you for bringing those who are lost into this place. And we thank you for giving us peace. Because without you, God, there is no true peace. Father, we thank you that you have made yourself available to us every second of the day, in the morning, the noon, the night, every second, Lord, you're there with us. And I thank you for being here today that we can call upon you, Holy Spirit, to be in this place to activate us, Lord, for your purposes. Lord, use us to the fullest today. We pray that you'd speak through the words of the worship and the music and all of heaven surrounding us. And I pray that the words that you use today to speak in the message will be sharp and ready to help every single person come closer to you. We thank you, God, for your blessings. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We have a few announcements uh, to make. First off, we have something really exciting. At the end of this month, March 25th and 26th, we're going to have a, a Resurrection 33 AD presentation. It's going to be Thursday night and Friday night. Okay. And uh, we, need, we need help. Um, if you came to the live nativity, it's going to be a lot like that. A narrator will be telling the story. We have seven scenes, and we need help in acting right now. Um, we still need Jesus. Uh, we need Jesus, and we need the two thieves that are on both sides of him. We've made a few phone calls, and people don't want to be hung on the cross. Uh, <laughs> so... If you know anyone that would like to be Jesus, it would be that age, you know, around 33 years old, um, send them our way. Also, we need help with making the sets. Dale and Tom Roscoe have been outside every day in the last week and a half, two weeks, making the sets. And so if you have any skill in, in building, if you have just two hours, um, give Dale a call, and you can be on his crew of creating if you want to be helping on those two nights, we have to have the scene changes. Um, we need people helping with that. But we also need actors and actresses still. So see us today about that. Also, Deborah and Megan, if you all want to come up here. Um, also, we wanted to let you know we have a few classes. And I'm not going to tell all of them today. But keep uh, looking at our website. We're going to be uploading different classes that are going to be starting in April. Deborah is going to be one of the classes. Come uh, over here, Deborah. And she's going to tell us just a little bit about her class. Glorious day here on the farm this afternoon. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Right. Warrior Notes Bible Study is a discipleship Bible study for people who want to know their authority in Christ that he's given us, who want to walk in power, who want to be overcomers, and who want to have abundant life here on earth before heaven. So um, there is a limited um, seating. It's in my home. And it, it, it will be on the web tomorrow. And what else? Oh, men and women. And that'll be it. All right. Yay. Megan. All right. <laughs> Yay. Yay. All right, I'm Megan Tovis. I'm representing the Tovis clan here today. Um, all the back end servers as the parents are out of town. But how many of you guys came to the live nativity? Oh yes, oh yes. Do you know how many people it took to run that thing? A lot. <laughs> so what the Tovis clan loves to do is serve the back end people. We love serving the servers and making sure that they sell well, stay well fed. 
and warm <laughs> and good to go. And so what Beverly and Jose will be doing for the Easter presentation is taking care of the food for the people that are performing, for the people that are on the set. And that is a lot of food because that is a lot of people. <laughs> and so I'm here to ask. Um, I know there's, there was a call out for carpenters. There was a call out for actors. And I'm here to call out for the people that love to serve the back end people. Um, if you Even if you can't be there for the presentations, we got some cooking and things that can get done beforehand. We have some cooking and things that we would love to have some help with, with, um, with serving the day of, yes, but definitely some like cookies, some uh, cornbread and et cetera that can get done beforehand. And we'd just love some help serving the people that are putting on this amazing, I, I heard them talking about this thing back upstairs. Oh my goodness, <laughs> like this is going to be insane and I'm so looking forward to it. But we wanna make sure that they're taken care of, that they have the energy to do this thing. And so if you wanna contact me, um, I'll be around for as long as my son allows me to. Um, and if you can't find us, then um, Sharon has my number. Um, or you can go ahead and talk to Bever Jose directly and um, see what we can get you plugged into and coordinated with. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. <clears throat> also, the Men's Fellowship is this coming Saturday. The Women's Fellowship is the next Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday. Um, also, we've gotten a few people that have called us, emailed, texted about tithing. Um, they said, oh, you never mentioned tithing. We do mention it sometimes, but we don't talk about it a lot. The big wheelbarrow currently is our tithe offering container. So you can go by the wheelbarrow and you can put your tithe in there. We have offering envelopes in there for the first Sunday today. Uh, so you can use those if you want. Scott Hahn is actually creating a tithe box for us. So you'll be able to put your tithe in it and it's not gonna fly away or anything like that. So we're really excited. And while we're talking about tithe, we wanna say Thank you for everyone who is supporting God's work here. God is doing exceedingly more than we can even think or imagine. God is covering every need that we have financially to keep us going. And we thank him and thank you for, for partnering with what God is doing here. I think that's it on announcements. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, Jen, lead us in worship. Thank you, worship team. So we had our ladies conference. I think I'm, I'm thinking somebody has had to have said something, but even this past weekend I did something else. And um, just the call on Christians right now to stand on God's word, to read his word, to know his word and to stand in his truth. We've got to, we've got to do it, you guys. And our, our God is amazing. He is powerful. He is almighty. Let's stand and worship together. Oh, yeah. 
Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him.
raise our voices, we raise our hallelujah to you, Lord Jesus. Our Savior, our mighty King, the conqueror. Lord, it's you that we are here for. It's you in your presence. God, your love for us is overwhelming. There's no place we'd rather be. We ask you to be here with us in this place as we pour out.
Spirit of the Living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every Hallelujah. 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 Yes. That was beautiful. That yes. Was beautiful. So beautiful. When the Spirit moves, when Jesus moves, when Jesus moves, it changes everything. Changes everything. This past week, I don't know, the days are kind of running together. I think it was Friday night. We went to the hospital, Dale and I, and, and the intensive care unit for one of our people that are here. Um, and we went to pray for Peggy Garland's husband that night. And they said that when they would take his medicine off, he would have two, two hours left to live. And, and he said, now I want to go to glory. He said, I'm ready to go to glory. And so he said, that's what I want you to pray is just that my transition is going to be glorious. And so anyway, we, we were there and we started to read Revelation chapter 4, Dale did, and Revelation chapter 21. And all of a sudden, in the ICU, the glory of God just fell in that room. It, the glory just fell and it changed everything. It changed everything. Jesus changes everything. I really thought that at that moment that like all of heaven, like all the angels were all crowded in the ICU um, department there and they're just all singing with us. And, and I thought, I think it's affecting all the nurses and all the people in the other stalls right now. They can hear what's going on and yeah. Jesus changes everything. And so I just wanted to encourage you that no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, Jesus does change everything. I wanted to tell one more quick story. Is that okay? okay. Dale's preaching today. Yeah. Um, so, uh, talking about the hospital, it just reminded me that several years ago, somebody had an accident in the front of our house. They ran into another car, and the people in the car had to be taken to the hospital. We actually knew the people. And so we get to the hospital and we pray for both of the cars, like the people that hit our friends. And um, we went into their little stall in the emergency room. We prayed for them and we prayed for our friends. And um, so anyway, that was pretty typical for what you do when you're pastors. You go in and you pray. And so years later, we, Dale and I are out here on the patio and we're having a wedding on this day. And a man comes up to us and says, Hey, I think I know you. And I thought, no, I don't, re I don't remember you. And he said, no, I, I know you from somewhere. And I looked at him. I said, I, I don't recognize you. He said, you're it. It's you and your husband. You were in the hospital that night. I, my son hit the people that you knew, and we were all in the emergency room, and you were going around praying for people in the emergency room, and he said, you prayed for my son that night. He didn't know Jesus, and he said, it changed everything. Yeah. Changed everything. Changed everything. Jesus changes everything. He can turn a circumstance. You can be in ICU and it changes everything when you bring Jesus in the room. You can be in a broken marriage and you bring Jesus in. And let me tell you, he's going to change everything. Uh -huh. Oh, it is glorious. It is glorious to walk with him. Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you for this preacher man that you've given us. Thank you, Lord. God, I just ask for your anointing to fall on him right now and his papers that are flying. Um, Lord God, I just ask that you will touch him right now. We're chasing papers while we're praying. Whoa, that was last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lord God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Open every ear to hear and eyes to see what you're saying today to your people. Lord, we want to be found worthy, Lord, of the high calling that you've given to us. Lord, may we be you as we go into ICU units to pray for people. May we be you everywhere we go. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to gather today in fellowship and to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
So the part of that story that's really incredible is that when we go to the hospital, we want to pray for people to be healed. And they didn't want us to pray that. They were ready for him to go on to glory. I can make peace with going to glory, but at the same time, I want to see people healed. And today, it's been like four days, and he's still alive. They said he was going to die that day. So the glory of God, the glory of God, right, comes into place, and he changes everything in the same way. So he did not die if you all have ever had that experience before. So I, I want to talk about Jesus is the Messiah, and revival is coming. How do we know revival is coming? Because we got a sad place here on this earth and in this, uh, this country right now. So God's best plan is to wake everybody up. It's not to let them go to sleep and just disappear. He wants them to wake up now. So the beginning of our journey here in March, almost a year ago next week, that every wedding that we had was canceled. Boom. Canceled. So what do you do with no income? You pray. So God allowed us to pray into what he wanted us to do. He said, okay, you're going to start a church. Where, Lord? There's no building. It won't do any good. He said, parking lot. I said, okay, drive in. I get it now. So this is like the most expensive building you have ever seen. There's no limit to the height. And the sun is coming in. It's air conditioned. <laughs> the rain, you get a, a free shower when it comes down. Amen. It's like I can't even compare it to anything else that I've ever experienced. And you all are here with us and God is here. And this is just the best. So... The Messiah is said to be the promised deliverer of the Jewish nation. That's where we got that word. It's Mashiach in Hebrew. And it's one of those things where I don't really understand it because it, it's, uh, it's so complex. God's greatest gift to us is the Messiah. But we don't understand it like the Jewish people because they've had their eyes on that forever. In America, we have had the Messiah. So it's like, oh, well, we got the best thing ever. But they don't. So the Jewish people have not found him yet. Even after being told in Genesis 8,000 years ago, you know, if you look at your own timeline, it's six to 8,000 years ago, the first revelation that Jesus was going to come as the Messiah was said 8,000 years ago. I can't even fix my eyes on that either. Not even 1,000. But that's a lot of waiting on God for the Messiah to come. They don't even know his name. They don't know his voice. They don't know what to expect. They have the entire Old Testament to refer to who the Messiah is. But yet, they're still looking for a man to be the Messiah. So Moses was the first pseudo-Messiah. He is the deliverer. And he was a man. And that's what the Jews are looking for. So they're always looking for the wrong thing. So who will elevate their people only the rulers of the earth will be elevated um, in the Jewish nation. They want to they wanna be the top dogs in the, in the earth. They don't really want everybody to win. So the Messiah is a very strong word concept. It's the strongest as a word that describes a person. But the most incredible of the word describes the one person we all know and love, the God-man, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Again, that's a long time ago for us to be present with him. But Jesus came to the Jews, but they killed him and tried to destroy the Christian people afterwards, and they're still looking for the Messiah. They are still God's chosen people, argue or not. They're still God's chosen people. That title has never been revoked from them. And God is using us, you and me, everybody here, to help them find their Messiah. So that means that we have to preach to the chosen people of God. They're chosen, we're chosen, but they're not listening. So if the Messiah has come already, and the beginning of all that was 8,000 years ago, and Jesus was 2,000 years, they have missed it. They have missed it. And they had the whole Bible in its entirety to understand. To me, that's shocking. It's totally shocking. They are basing their entire beliefs on the Old Testament Bible, and yet they are blind to the truth that has passed them by. 
So one of the the cool stories is the wedding. If do you all like weddings? I really love weddings. Sharon and I love weddings because we've been to over 300 weddings. Can anybody top that? <laughs> so I'm going to read the parable of the ten virgins waiting for the bridegroom. So bear with me, okay? Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Just remember that part. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. That's like getting in your car and not getting any gas. Who would do that? But the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. And while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Trimming means turn your light on. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, no, I'm not giving you my gas, lest there should be not enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him in the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. I'm still shocked that the Jewish people have not received their Messiah. So half the bridesmaids didn't make it to the wedding. Have you ever been to a wedding and half the bridesmaids didn't show up? For They ran out of gas on the way there. It's just a terrible thing. So, Sharon and I, I'm going to give you our wedding testimony. This is the closest I can get to this parable, unless you all can top it, come to me afterwards, and then I'll put you up on stage. So, our testimony of our wedding happened 40 years ago. 40. That's actually in, when is that, August? It's in August. It'll be 40 years. So, we were married in a little country church, very tiny, I think maybe 75 people could actually fit. It was standing room only. Sharon knew a lot of people. I did not have any friends hardly there except for my bride's boys, or my groom's boys, excuse me. But she packed out the house. People came from, I don't know, 40 miles away to come to Sharon's wedding. They didn't care about Dale. They just cared about Sharon's wedding. She was homecoming queen, if that gives you any understanding about that. So everything was prepared. Everyone, family and friends, were assembled waiting. Okay, I'm going to say this another time. Waiting. Okay, another time. Waiting and waiting. Okay, that's, that's enough waiting. Sharon's dad was not arriving on, at the wedding on time. So I was praying for a miracle backstage with the minister and my brother on my knees at the altar. Without Sharon's father blessing our marriage, I'll let you write the rest of that story, what that would have looked like. It's not a good picture. It would have been devastating to me because I've been at every one of my son-in-law's weddings, and I was the one escorting the bride down to the altar. And if I had not been there, it would have missed the greatest event in my daughter's lives. So finally, my prayers to the Lord were answered. Sharon's dad was 30 minutes behind schedule. He had his dress suit on. He was hoping to miss the ceremony, he told us later. He was hoping to miss the ceremony. He was a very, very shy dad and very allergic to church and very allergic to church people. And he's one of those guys that would say, if I showed up at church, the church building would catch on fire. So that's how he really perceived church. Uh, my beautiful sp spotless bride and my future father-in-law came down the aisle together to me, the awaiting groom. And yes, we were married before Almighty God and all the witnesses. The 40 years of blessings that we've had has never stopped in Sharon and my married life. Waiting is good, I just want to say. For 30 minutes, I waited. The Jews have been waiting for a long time for their Messiah. I love the story of Isaiah's 700-year-old messianic prophecy. 
Jesus fulfilling it in his own words, speaking in Luke 4, 700 years waiting for the prophecy to be, to be fulfilled. That's a long wait for anybody. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's our Jesus. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And all the eyes of all who, who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all those in the synagogue, that's church for the Jews, right? All those who are in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and, this, and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. So I'm going to do a little creative license here. You all can go with me on that, right? So I'll tell it in my own words. Jesus comes to his hometown church with his Jewish family and brothers. He reads their favorite prophet verses out of a scroll, getting them ready for his big reveal. He strokes them. All of heaven is watching this story. The father has sent in his favorite son, his only son, to propel the Jews into their long-awaited destiny. Just think about it. Heavenly silence for when Jesus quotes out of Isaiah. Then Jesus gives them the full gospel of the Messiah according to the Almighty God. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry right where he lives. Right where he lives. Exciting opening this gift. The devil is furious at church. He's in the church where Jesus is doing his first announcement. The people immediately reject his Messiah declaration in furious anger, just like the devil. The Jews become a killing mob inside the church, yelling and screaming death to the Messiah. Unthinkable. Unthinkable. They escort Jesus to the forbidden cliffs of the city, throw him over the cliffs to kill him. Jesus becomes invisible. All of heaven watches the sun's response to these people. Jesus shakes off the moment. Then he walks to the next town as the anointed Messiah. What an exciting beginning for Jesus first day on the job. Imagine that the first day on the job, he's tried to be killed and the devil wants to throw him out. This is how the son of God works family. This is our Messiah. Hong Kong. I thought everybody was sleeping. <laughs> then the 12 disciples were given Jesus' authority to preach in Luke 9. Then in Acts 1, we, the church, are given the same authority. Jesus' disciples are given the same authority to preach the Messiah from a prophecy 2,700 years ago. I'm going to go back in time again. Woo. God is amazing when he, think, when he speaks from the past to our future. Any preachers here today? No? Okay. See me afterwards. As we await our next earth moment of importance, our Messiah has come. So Peter said it perfectly. Uh, Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Peter answers and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I think that's amazing. So we are blessed. This is who we are, church. We are built on God's rock. Built on God's rock. Hell is on notice. He's been on notice for 
2,000 years. We can keep people from entering the gates of hell. It's not a weapon against anyone anymore because the gates of hell don't work. Now we can lead people to the gates of heaven. So our assignment on earth is to walk like God's children. You've heard that before, love everyone. God is love. We're supposed to love because that's God's greatest attribute is to love everybody. We're also commanded to preach the gospel, however you do that. Also heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, give sight to the blind. With all of God's authority, we have God's permission to do these things. So now, when we talk to everyone, we know and see and declare that Jesus, as the Christ, is the Christ. He is the greatest gift to all mankind and the earth. The church that we have right here, that he's given to us, is the most powerful human organization on the earth, the church. This is to lead the people of the earth to their Messiah. Christ is here now. So we have to get used to the fact that we are like the governing body of the, the whole earth. We are the spiritual authorities over the whole earth. We might have a really lofty job. I've met the president and the vice president, and I thought, you guys are great. Your jobs is, are amazing. You can really move things around. But at the same time, you have to realize that the spiritual things that God puts inside you are from the throne of God. He has given you these things. And your job is secondary because what you have, he has given to you to preach everywhere and to love everyone. There's no one on this earth that you can't love. I just want to say that. To lead the people to their Messiah. That's a tough, that's a tough one. Um, in Matthew 16, then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Not in a literal sense, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit it is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father and his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. That is not a bonus in your paycheck. That's the eternal gift that God gives all of us to say that we can receive anything from God, and he's going to keep it in our savings account forever. So here's what Jesus is asking him to do. Call him Lord. Surrender up our lives like Peter, Peter the Apostle. He, like Jesus, was crucified. Do you all know the story of Peter's end? He was crucified just like Jesus for his faith and preaching, but he was crucified upside down. He was not crucified straight up like Jesus. He didn't think he could, he was, he would not be honoring God if he did it that way. So he requested his executioners to be crucified upside down. So we today carry the cross of Jesus on our backs every single day. I don't know if you all feel that. It's heavy sometimes, very heavy. Like Sharon said earlier, going to a hospital to pray for someone who's dying, that is not an easy cross-carrying job, I have to say. My, my countenance was a little sad because I didn't want to see a brother lose his life. I wanted him to be healed and come out of that thing, jumping and leaping and praising God. So the answer for us to get more of a revelation of who God is is to spend more time with him and to read his word and to be filled with his spirit. I'm going to say it again. Preach to everyone the Messiah has come. I love, I love to talk about Jesus. Have you all ever seen me talking too much? Sometimes I'm talking too much about him. And it's intoxicating, actually, to talk about the Lord that way because he does so many things around us that I can't stop talking about what he's doing all the time. And you all are included to that because I see everybody here starting to be affected in having Jesus in your life because if you start to see what he's doing, you get excited the same way. And all the testimonies that keep on coming back to us, like make Sharon and I just run around the kitchen with joy, preaching to each other. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jesus and our heavenly home to come. So Jesus has prepared a place for us, right? And when I get personal time with my creator, 
now it's special, but when I get to spend time with Jesus face to face, eye to eye, hug to hug, I don't even know what to think. That's like the song that you just don't know what to say. What will I say? How will I do it? I can't, the president, when I met him, it wasn't that way. He's a really important guy, but I did not like go overboard and hug him. This is going to be the, the longest hug I have ever had. So this is the one who made us, right? He's the one who sustains our breath. He loves us. He protects us. He feeds us. He clothes us. He solves our problems. He paid the price for our sins. He gives us a new life and brings us into his home now and forever. So I'm just going to finish quickly here. Jesus is. He's always there. He is the King of Kings, the Holy One of God, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the bright and morning star, the bread of life. He's living water, the coming King, the Lord of hosts, the Christ, the Son of God, the Counselor, the Mighty One, the Lord of Lords, the Savior of the world, the way, the truth, the life, the one who loves us and paid it all. Jesus is the Messiah. He has given us the best life ever. We wait our entire lives to see him. That's a long time for many of us. But for many of us here today, life is short. We don't know what the next day holds for us. We don't know if we're going to die in the next moment or even in the next day. God has all of our days outlined. The doctor might have told you, like um, David in the, in the hospital that, this past week, he says after we take away the medication, he's got an hour. And it's been four days. So doctors had no bearing on your life. Only God knows the number of your days and you don't have to listen to the doctor. You need Jesus, the doctor to tell you how long you have. So revival must take place in our lives for those who are not in God's family and are lost. That's why I say that revival is coming and Jesus is coming back soon. So I want you all just to pray right now. You might have everything in your life in order and you might have friends that are not with Jesus and you might have family that are not with Jesus so we just want to pray right now so father we thank you that we know you and that we have accepted you God we know that every single person has got to make peace with you for the next moment in their lives and we receive God that there are some here today that need to make that decision so if you've made that decision already to follow Jesus in this audience, both live stream and in this uh, parking lot, open sky, I want you to pray with me right now. God, I, I thank you for being the Savior of the world, my Savior. And God, I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins that I've ever committed against you. I pray, God, that you would help me, that I would not be without you, in anything anymore. I want you to be my savior and I ask you, God, to come inside my heart right now. Jesus, I want you to be my savior. I want you to be the Messiah. I want you to fill my whole life. So I ask now, God, for you to come in. And maybe you have left God and you have not followed him the way you should today is the day of your decision to come back to him so I want you all to pray with me on that those of you who have left God Lord I'm sorry that I've left you that I've not made my commitment firm for you I ask that you forgive me I ask Holy Spirit that you would make up for lost time and come inside my life today and I ask that you would fill me to overflowing God let me have the fire of God living within me. And Lord, I pray for your protection that I would never, ever leave you again. And some of you today here have not felt the Holy Spirit the way that you know that you should. There's people around you getting excited, but you're just not getting it. So pray with me. Lord, I thank you that you have made me in your image. I thank you for your word of truth that tells me that I can call out to you and you'll answer. God, I ask that you would open up all of heaven, open up your word, open up the Holy Spirit. And I ask that you would come back in with power to fill me to overflowing. 
Lord, I thank you for being with me today. Thank you, God. So for all of us here, we need to pray for our families. We need to pray for our friends. Nobody needs to go to hell. Nobody needs to be without God at every moment of the day. So, Lord, I pray for every person here. Make us aware, Lord, of how we're supposed to pray for those who are lost, those who are not doing well, those who are struggling. Lord, I pray that you'd help us today to choose to love every single person around us and preach your word to those without fear. Jesus, we thank you for being in this place today. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would overtake all of us. Help us to be ready to walk through the gates of heaven, to meet you eye to eye and not miss out on anything, Lord. Help us to preach to the Jews and help us to love them to you, Jesus. We thank you, God. We bless your holy name. Amen. Just to remind you, we have the communion elements up here. If you'd like to participate in communion today with us, we'd love to have you join us.
Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy. Lord, on that night before your crucifixion, Lord, you gathered with your disciples around that table and you took the bread and you cup the cup and you said that this is the new covenant. It's the new covenant that we get to share as believers and we're to do this in remembrance of him every time we gather together. Right now, we're going to take the cup. I would take the bread first, but I can't hold that until I put the cup down. Lord God, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the new covenant, Lord, that by your blood that was shed on Calvary, Lord, because of what you did, we have eternal life. We celebrate, Lord, that one day that we will all be seated together at the wedding supper of the Lamb with you at the head. Oh, Lord, we look forward to that day. Lord, you told us to take this as often as we meet, Lord, so that we could remember what you did. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let's drink the the cup. Lord, we thank you for your body broken for us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the suffering that you did for us. Thank you for being the lion and the lamb. We thank you that you change everything. Thank you, Lord. Let's take the bread together. Makes you want to just dance around the whole property, doesn't it? Because what he did for us, we got resurrection power. Mm, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, send us out this week. Help us to remember that you change everything. Everything. Lord, help us never to take for granted one minute of our life. Lord, that we know that wherever we walk, your glory goes with us. Lord, help us to know that when you change everything, it's not about us, but it's about you changing everything. Lord, help us to remember who we are in you. Oh, Lord God, I just ask right now that that miracles will surround us. Lord, that we will walk into any circumstance, Lord, and expect you to move things. Lord, help us, God, increase our faith to believe and to know that you are able to do exceedingly more than we can think or imagine. Oh, Lord, may we be found worthy, God, of everything that you're asking of us right now. Lord, I thank you. Lord, fill our oil. Lord, you say in your word for us to be continually filled. Lord, we're asking for a more of a filling right now, Lord. God, fill us up so that we can pour out. Lord, so that we can use more oil, so that we can give more oil, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity that you're giving us right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless our people on this property right now, their homes, their marriages, their children, those that don't know Christ yet and their families. God, we're asking for a miracle for those who need to come to know you as their personal savior. Lord God, we ask right now for healing for any in our congregation that are sick or hurting. Lord God, we ask for a healing for all those listening right now. God, would you touch their body right now, Lord, and take the pain away and and heal them at this very moment, God, by your power. Oh, Lord, thank you, God. Lord God, we just ask right now, Lord, that you will send us out into the dark world as lights on on a hill, Lord, that our light cannot be hidden. We thank you, Lord. Be glorified. 
in us this week. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We're going to just continue to worship for just a minute and then come in. Dale and I will pray for you if you want prayer. with us today. Our God is good. Our God is good.